my name's Greg Platts. I'm a uh, pathologist at the Hermitage Research Station in Queensland working for DAFQ. A lot of a pathologist's work servicing industry is to provide them with uh, realistic yield loss figures upon which to base their control strategies. Um, I, I guess from where we sit we'd like to see every variety out there resistant but that's almost um, an impossible request so we therefore have to implement disease control measures that growers can maximise the returns from their crops and a lot of the data that has been generated has been based upon a nil versus a disease plot appraisal whereby you get a single figure that tells you what losses you might incur. Now that's okay but it's very limited in its extension to other seasons, other levels of disease and to varieties with different levels of disease resistance also. Most of that sort of work that pathologists do, if you're trying to demonstrate how much yield loss occurs from yellow spot in wheat, you pick a susceptible variety, you put a lot of disease on it, you keep one plot clean and then you compare your disease with your clean one, so your losses can be quite gigantic. But in a true farming situation, you only get those years where you have heavy losses, probably one in 10, one in 20 years. So what we're trying to do is fill in a lot of those gaps in the middle. We could run these trials every year for the next 20 years, which would achieve the same as we're trying to do in a, a five year period. A yield response curve is a, um, I'll say a graphical summary of the performance of a variety against a continuum of disease epidemics. So virtually from no disease, well, we will produce figures on that and hopefully we'll produce figures on a really severe epidemic and then points in between that. So once we develop the yield loss response curves, um, it's their application by way of control strategies and variety choices that is the, the value of having them. They're, they're much more informative than just a, a one value, 50% loss or 40% loss, whatever it might be. Um, the data we've already accumulated shows that there's, um, as you would expect to, that there is a, um, a decrease in loss in a variety with increasing resistance and within a variety there's a decrease in loss with decrease in disease pressure but it's the amount of that decrease that is important so we've produced disease loss curves on a couple of the trials that we're confident are producing good data and the one for barley leaf rust that we're, we're looking at um, features a couple of extremes and one of those is compass which in our environment is very susceptible to leaf rust and it has produced a very um, steep slope on the graph indicating that um, it loses a lot of yield per unit of disease increase whereas something like Latrobe which we rate as an MSS it does have a bit of a resistance um, it loses very little yield Per unit increase of disease so it tells you two things one is a if you grow latrobe you might not have to apply fungicide uh, if you decide you want to there's a bit of a period of forgiveness so that if you don't get it on this week but it goes on next week you're not going to lose a lot of yield in that lag phase whereas if you did waited a week once you see disease in compass you could lose a significant amount of yield so